Hey everyone, happy feast of the transfiguration of Jesus. I believe that a lot of people were meditating on the word this morning in the daily readings, possibly thinking of Jesus up on the mountain, transfiguring into this, into this bright sun, white as snow, and the apostles who were there to be blessed to see it were in awe. Jesus is speaking to Moses and Elijah. And then Peter says, oh, it's good that we're here, Lord. We should be building some tents and let's stay up on this mountain because we want to have this encounter forever. We don't want to go back down that mountain into that world of life, do we? Let's stay here. But God spoke to me in a very different way. When the Father spoke in a big, booming voice after all this happens, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. How many of us are parents or have friends and family members that we tell them, hey, I don't think you ought to do that because I don't think you're going to be really happy after you make that decision and you say that or you do that because we have been there, done that, and we know how we felt after we have made those decisions or said those things. Pretty much, I think every parent knows, honey, don't touch that burning stove because you're going to get burned. Don't run because you're going to fall. This is when they're kids. And then as they get older, we give them all these tidbits of advice because we've been there and done that and had the shame and the embarrassment and the regret of those decisions in our lives. And let's think about if you're not a parent. You've probably had a friend or a coworker or a family member that you are trying to do the same thing, helping them from experiencing that hurt, whether it be physical, spiritual, or emotional. And then sometimes all three, right? So let's think about God, the Father, basically shouting out, listen to my son, y'all. Come on. He will show you. How to find that peace, that love, that kindness, that generosity that you can then bring into the world to those around you. The truth, the way, and the life, who is Jesus, that is a person, is who is going to lead us to that peace. He is the truth. He sets us free. That truth sets us free. I've experienced this in my own life. I can't tell you how many sins that I have been blessed with and graced by God to walk away from. I no longer have to be regretful or be ashamed or wallow in my pathetic nature that I don't have the willpower to stay away from certain things. He has done so much in my life and I'm still struggling with things. Of course, we all will. We're all sinners. There's no question. So why don't we listen to him? Let's try today and every day to listen to how God wants us to live. It's not boring. It's so peaceful. It's so joyful. And when we live the way that God teaches us to live, and when we thank him and give him praise and pray to him all day, we can bring that love to the world. That's what we're called to. If you are on the path and you're finding that you're not really changing the way you feel toward people, the way you act toward people, the way you love people, then you're not allowing God to work his graces in you. You need to kick that pride to the curb and start humbling yourself and asking God to help you live the way that he tells us to live. For us to listen to him, listen to him. There's a reason he speaks to us. So stop being full of fear. Stop worrying. Stop being anxious about life. If we are humble enough to give it all to him, he will take it. We can trust him. Don't be angry with that person. Don't submit or succumb to that temptation. Do not get, fall into that lustful behavior. Don't be gluttonous. Keep God the center and he will transform everything. Let's pray today. Lord, please help me listen to you. I'm Kendra Von Ash. Have a blessed and inspired day. Take care.